Um, again, doing remote meetings. Um, when I say your name, please you know state your full name and where you're attending the meeting from. So, Fred. Where, where is Catherine? Is oh, she... um, we'll we'll get we'll get to Catherine, and I'll explain that. Catherine's not going to be joining us tonight. Okay. So, Fred. Fred Edison at my home in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle at my home in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Regina. Okay, at my home in Kalamazoo. <laughs> um, and Catherine is ill this evening. She is not going to be able to join us. I, both Sharon and I received notification earlier. Um, Lene. Lene Powell Wilson at home in Kalamazoo. Okay, and I am Joshua Koenig at my home in Delton. Um, so moving to approval of agenda. I have one thing to add. Okay. Um, we, to under um, the grave issue squad. Yes. Uh, uh, at my home, it has become evident to me from watching Facebook that the city, unbeknownst to me, has take, undertaken to lift an awful lot of gravestones up and straighten them and repair mm. them. And I, I want to talk about what we might, Grave Issue Squad might be involved in following up on that. So that would be okay. um, item 7E1. Yeah. And okay. then I also want to talk about um, what's currently happening with the Sexton slide. So that'd be 7E2. All right. Okay, are there any other additions or amendments? <clears throat> Pam. If we could have an update on the um, Bronson Park study, mm -hmm. sun and shade study. Um, I don't see it on the agenda, but it seems as though Andrews University semester is probably coming to an end soon. I, I don't have an update um, and when so my meeting with Christina is Christina and I are meeting on May 5th okay. so but WMU we have um, you know this week plus two more weeks so I imagine Andrews is still in session at this point in time so I don't have an update Should I haven't I, heard anything yeah yeah so, and from the talk with Christina, the, the plan was to have that finalized at some point in time in May, from what I understood. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other amendments? Okay, I will ask for a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Anyone? Sorry. Regina? I didn't unmute myself. I'll motion to approve the agenda as amended. Is there a second? All second. second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any do opposed? we need do we need to vote on Catherine? Sorry. Yeah, that's that's true. I I totally skipped over the approval of absence. Is there uh, can I get a motion to approve Catherine's absence? I'll motion to approve Catherine's absence. All right, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, now, introduction of guests. Pam. Yeah, yeah that would be me, Pam O'Connor, um, at home in the city of Kalamazoo. Okay. Um, citizen comments on non-agenda items and correspondence. Are there any citizen comments? One, please. One moment. I'll get to you, Pam. There are no citizen comments at this time yet. Um, so we'll revisit later. Okay, thank you. Pam, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind the commission members that the Michigan Historic Preservation Network Conference is coming up mm -hmm. mid-May. And I believe that the Preservation Commission still has a policy of um, reimbursing commissioners for their registration fee. And it's a really good lineup. 
And a lot of it aligns with some of the things that we've been talking about. So I would encourage you all to at least take a look at it. And if you like, I'm happy to um, resend the um, brochure information to everyone. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, Pam, I think that would be good for, for those who are not familiar with it. Will do. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, um, moving to the financial report. Um, for this, I'm really excited to say that I'm gonna hand this over to uh, Lene and Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I put together a little timeline. I had, uh, Sharon and I had a conversation with Marcy Dix mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> on March 18th and, we and she gave some guidance on when things should be approved and um, processed through the commission and forwarded on to her department and things like that. <clears throat> so I gave a timeline of things we can start doing um, specifically starting this summer. <clears throat> um, obviously the, the one for today is just totally wrong because of, you know, the COVID, but mm -hmm. Moving forward, we'll have a guidance on <clears throat> where we need to go and when it needs to be approved. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. That's all right. Anyway, um, we talked about um, Marcy Dix is the owner, <clears throat> excuse me, of this project, but she's passing it on, she believes, to Beth, <clears throat> Beth Cheeseman. And Sharon, did you hear anything? Is that definite? I haven't heard anything yet. No. Nope. I haven't heard anything. So I sent but her I, an email hoping for her to respond so that <clears throat> we have a go-to person mm -hmm. um, that we can forward our questions and things to. Right now, we would just continue to ask Marcy until we hear mm -hmm. officially. But I have to tell you, I love the little timeline thing. Yeah, I, that makes I did it, too. That's <laughs> really, really nice. And we can just like move it along as we go through the year, you know, but that's really nice. Right. So we can, you know, at least target. I mean, <clears throat> obviously there's going to be some deviations for whatever reason, but at least we know what needs to be done when. Um, we also talked about, um, um, you know, she, she just suggested that we never go below $5,000 in our ballots, um, which I don't think we are. We're at 6800 or some odd dollars now, so we're good. Um, <clears throat> and then also when we approve things for, um, the, uh, monies to go over to the O'Connor fund, we need to make sure that we send her the notes cause she has to file that. So <clears throat> just, just FYI, and uh, obviously I'll take care of that, but just for everybody's, uh, edification. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I showed you the timeline and then if you look at the bottom, I think this was one of the questions that uh, was raised at the last couple of meetings on how does she come about to get a total of how much we have in our balance. And so I gave kind of a, a brief synopsis of how much is in the balance, in our balance and where the funds came from or have been deducted from. So um, I gave that information towards the bottom. Um, and what I'm going to try to do is this will be, <clears throat> this format will be kind of like the notes from our meetings. And I'll just add every um, time we meet um, the date and our notes so that there's a repository of what's going on and what needs to be done and completed. So I can submit this um, <clears throat> monthly um, so that, and also, you know, the timeline also, so we all remember, um, you know, what's, what's done next. So <clears throat> I don't know if, if there's any questions, um, because I think, uh, yeah, on here, we're supposed to approve the 2021 budget, although we're almost done with it, but there's that. <clears throat> yeah, we still need to, though, even though, I mean, we're going to be creating next year's budget. I mean, in a matter of months at this point in time, but we do still need to. Right, right. Understood. Understood. Yeah. So are there I any have questions? 
I have a comment and a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm not challenging Marcy's recommendation that the Preservation Commission keep a $5,000 balance, but I'm curious to, to find out why she suggested that. It becomes some kind of a, um, well, one of the issues is that she's found that in other uh, budgets, they go below the $5,000 and then they need to have do something and it becomes a tailwind of her trying to get them the money dispersed to them in time. <clears throat> so she's recommending not to go below the $5,000 to make sure that you have enough for your operating expenses um, that you'll have immediately as opposed to waiting for her to go and get it approved, get it dispersed, yada, yada, yada. And that was one of the issues. The other issue was that <clears throat> um, it, it becomes some kind of accounting issue where she's keeping, where she has to keep up with, um, you know, sending money out so many times out of the year, you know, um, this way you'll already have your own reserve and you, she, you don't have to keep asking her because she has to um, document and report every time she goes in and tries to pull money out. And uh, she's very busy. And I'm not saying her personally, but she's very busy trying to uh, manage and budget the other commissions and committees <clears throat> such that she would prefer you just to have the $5,000. And that way she doesn't have to keep going back and doing the accounting uh, procedures that she has to go through in order for her to disperse the money to you, and especially in a timely fashion. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge that a little bit because it's my understanding that there are no other commissions or committees that by ordinance have the right to hold money or real property. Right. And that may be true, but she's saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sharon, she's in charge of all of the money for the city. And so because of, even though we may be the only ones in the commission and maybe I've misspoke, but she's in charge of all the money. So there's other programs right. that she has to account for. And it's just, it's just easier for her to just make sure you have the $5,000 and she doesn't have to keep going back. But yeah, there's so, no so, place to, wait, there's no place to go back to. We have no other money. Yeah, but but the it within her bookkeeping, there's the budget budget adjustment that needs to be made if we draw down too far, it's got to be accounted for. So we have to go back if we spend, you know, we have almost seven thousand dollars in the account right now. If we spend four thousand dollars, what we would want to do is get the money transferred from the O'Connor fund to bring it back up to over $5,000. So that if we need it, it's there waiting for us. It's like when you have two bottles of ketchup, you have one in the cupboard and one that you're using. When you stop using the one in the cupboard, you move it in and then you get a new one. And so we're trying to just, you know, stay ahead of it so that we don't have to do, go through a lot of budget adjustments. Okay, I don't, don't, have that. I don't see that as an issue with this commission, but. Well, well, it's more for her because every time she goes in and touches that money, she's got to do this whole accounting okay. process. So it's okay. more for her. Right. That's that's kind of what I was thinking, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, I was trying to get drilled down a little bit. Yeah, um, it's more for her, not for us, but it's more for her because she has to go back and do all this accounting, okay. um, you know, notifications and everything. And so she's like, if you just keep 5,000, you're good. And then, and then, you know, She's so far behind, she was saying, in doing her accounting now. It's, you know, it's just better for us to have our money readily available. Okay. Um, two other things. Quickly, mm -hmm. um, there is another opportunity that we should think about making a budget item or at least a budget consideration, and that is compensation to commissioners for conference attendance, which we just talked about. Um, I know that you made a note about the fund can pay for national trust memberships, um, but it can also reimburse commissioners for conference registration. So you, so, you might want to make a note uh, of that. Sorry? We, talk, we talked about, um, uh, because I did bring up the subject of, or actually Sharon brought up the subject of we were trying to get a grant uh, committee together and it should have its own budget and things like that. And so she's, didn't she say, wait for now? Didn't she say that? Because you remember we talked about 
under the new committee that we're putting together, it probably should have its own <clears throat> uh, yes. line item. Um, and she asked us to wait for that right now until we get um, the um, approvals on the grants. And then she would yep. create the line item. Right, right. No, so I think you guys are talking about two different things. <clears throat> Pam's talking about, um, as we have already got it in place, if uh, Fred registers for the MHPN conference, he sends us a copy of his receipt, we reimburse him. That's, that's what she's talking about. That's available. These aren't grants. And then the grant program that Pam and Josh and Regina and I are working on is a totally separate thing. And we, we haven't done anything with the budget on that yet, because that's a totally, it's okay. not separate, right. but it has, we are definitely going to wait to integrate that until we decide a lot more about how it's going to work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. And, and Pam, in, in past years, um, at least, you know, the past several years that I've been doing with the budget with Marcy and Sharon, um, you know, we've always debated, do we want that special line item for reimbursement of commissioners or these past three or four rounds, it's been under, what is it, discretionary funds or, or whatever that big blanket uh, budget line item has been. And you know, Marcy has always said, we can have it as special, it, its own specific line item, or it can come out of this one kind of spending bucket and it, it's been there, it's just not under name. We can absolutely put it under name if we <clears throat> Well, actually- No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm just, I just want Lene to know as the treasurer that that is something that the commission has agreed to do for her, for her personal knowledge as the treasurer. Got it. Right. right, and they, and actually I'm looking at what she gave me. There is a line item for education and training. And yeah. membership and dues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The last thing I wanted to say is that <clears throat> in my 30 plus years of association with this commission, we have never had this. <laughs> and I am so glad you made this. Because <clears throat> well, it's understandable. I, just, I, yeah, I, I have to have something on paper so I can see what I'm doing. So... Well, I was like I'm gonna share it with everybody because I can't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just thank you for setting a benchmark 35 years later. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have. So I don't know if you want to do the voting for the budget. Yeah. So it was postponed from February to March. Um, it, it, can somebody remind me? Did we have a motion? I can't even remember now, and it, I totally forgot to look. Amen. Was, was there a motion on the table to approve? I think, hold on just a second. I'm getting down there. Here we go. Uh, no, we did not have a motion. Okay. Last month. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I mean, thank you for all this, Lene. Um, I will then call for a motion to approve the 2021 budget. I'd like to I don't know, can I approve or can I? You can vote. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can. Oh, you okay. can. We've, we've, I, we've got to have the motion first, though. Okay. <clears throat> I motion to I approve the budget. There Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Uh, actually, this is money, so we have to do roll call vote. Yeah, uh, Fred? Yes. Kyle? So this is all based on something we looked at before. It's not yes. part of the current packet? Yeah. Right, it's not. I forgot to put it in. If you want to see it, I can share screen and show you. That's fine. If the treasurer has a handle on it, then I'm good. <laughs> yes. so, okay. Regina? Uh, yes. Lene? Yes. And I vote yes. So the motion passes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lene. Seriously, thank you. <laughs> sure. And Kyle, don't worry. We're going to look at it again in like 
three months or something. It's not going to be too long, but I do. <laughs> I, I, I am also loving your, uh, your graphic Lene and the great, layout. Great. And let me know if there's anything questions so I can at least try to get you some for the meetings. So no, I appreciate that. Um, okay. So moving on to action and discussion items, uh, Sharon, the survey <laughs> and the CLG grant. This is item B in your packet, y'all. Yep. Two things. The um, Well, part of it is in my packet, but I think this came up. Yeah, there's something that came up for the grant that has come up that the National Park Service has extended all of the 2020 grants 20, so that they can be extended through the end of fiscal 2021 okay. or something like that. 2022. Anyway, everything, we're going to extend the whole program so things will not be due until the end of September 2022 will be the end of the grant instead okay. of the end of September this year. Okay, so it'll be the end of fiscal 2022 is when it'll be done. So this just means it's going to give us a little more wiggle room. Um, I think this is really splendid. I, I checked with the people at Kramer. They're very much in favor of this. This is the first time we've done this in the state of Michigan where we have had a, you know, we're been, we've been using the uh, smartphone app survey technique. And this way, if we run into any kind of stumbling blocks or unexpected problems, we will have plenty of time to work it out without pushing up against a deadline that's only effectively four months away, five months away. So um, we're going through the process of amending the agreement between the city and SHPO and uh, um, just waiting to go on with that. So it's going to mean that everything is just a little bit, not quite as, as, uh, as rapid a pace, but I think that's okay for being, we're kind of like the pilot program. We're the, the test, the uh, trial balloon to see if it's going to work or not. So I'm, I'm really kind of glad that we're going to have a little bit more space to, to take care of things. So, um, and then the rest of it, you saw that my my report says we're already over, we're probably even more than that, over 3,405 buildings surveyed. We're probably closer to 3,500 right now because people have been out and about and they've been sending stuff in. So we're doing very well. How's yeah. the Stuart uh, survey looking? I was wondering if what we sent by phone got into the program. It looked like it was going when we looked at the phone, looked like it was loading. Yeah, if, if your outbox is empty, then it, it went, okay? And I haven't had a chance to sit down and look over everything that people have done because we've had uh, an active team out in Oakwood. Stuart, all the, all the assignments in Stuart are gone. And we've got about two thirds of Vine and two thirds of West Main Hill done as well. So, and Jack Urban has been out there on the North side. Nice. So um, we've been, you know, we, and East side is just about half done now. So we're making some very real progress here. It's going, it's going well. And uh, once up the middle of the month for me is always very, very busy because it's HPC and HDC. And mm -hmm. so either end of that is when I'm really pushing on the survey stuff. So we'll probably see a lot more um, progress in the, you know, by, mm -hmm. by the meeting next month, we'll see even more work done. I had so. only two houses. Excuse me, Pam, go ahead, Pam. No, go ahead, Fred, finish. I only had two houses that didn't want the picture of the house taken. Okay. We put that down in the notes. Now I noticed that I couldn't, there's probably a way to do it, but I, once I left an address and I wanted to go back and add notes, I wasn't comfortable at navigating in my program back to the previous address and get the I, notes yeah, updated. I totally so get I, that. And that is, I, that's very I, tricky to do. I put the notes on the next address explaining it. So I, it should be clear. Yeah, and if you have any, like I have um, one of the guys out in Oakwood, not surprising, he's had at least three people say, no, you can't take pictures. And he just sends me the addresses. And then I just take a quick look at what other photos we already have. And then note whether it's going to be worthwhile going back um, or whether we've got enough to go on with what we have. We don't need so, a perfect picture of absolutely every building. We just want to get as many as we can. Those addresses are in the program that I didn't send you a specific email that I didn't get. You can do that if you want to, too. And you say, like, you know, I had problems with 211 and 213 Elm, and that's really all I need. And then I okay. would just check, and I've got a whole file of them that I'm keeping um, so that we can go back. And if we need to, we can go back and re-photograph 
maybe when more of the leaves are off the trees, maybe from a car, something like that. I mean, I just haven't decided yet. But if we can get 98% of the houses in the city, I think we're going to be doing really, really well. So, you know, the street in Stewart, I didn't even know it was there, Meredith Place. Meredith Place? A little tiny stub of a dead end street off from Kalamazoo between Elm and Greenwich. Hmm. It's just two houses down the street. It's dirt. Oh, too. yeah, that's right. And yeah, it's and that's signs right. broken, but it's got Meredith Place on the Kalamazoo sign. It was are um both Sears kid houses. They look yeah, they did look like that. Yeah. And the stucco one was completely stripped and redone. The guy had a bunch of uh, Mexican guys that knew how to do it come in and restuck with the house, and it turned out great. So I wish those, those that team was still around. We could use them. But if yeah. You get, if you don't find a, if they don't let you take a, don't they have, you know, the people who drive up and down the street, Amazon or Google or somebody? Yep. Yep. It's well, we don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Google and it's, uh, yeah. And, and of course, the, you know, the assessor goes out regularly and takes pictures. Back in the year 2000, they did the entire city in about two months um, because I just, I'm working with those photos all the time. So I know that, that it has been done and we just, if we need to just skip it, we just skip it. Yeah. And that's okay. You know, I mean, we may be able to get back later and take it from a car without anybody bothering us or at least get one good new shot. And that's really all we, that's the basics that we really need. So, but there's ways to get that from our, um, our aerial surveys. And from Google Earth and other, you know, Google Street View. So, yeah. We can get um, yeah, yeah. On the topic of photographing, as long as you're in the public right of way, the owner it's, can't tell you not to take a photograph. They, they can tell us not to take a photo, and we have every legal right to do it. But for the, uh, for, you know, public relations, we've decided that we're not going to push it. Let's we'll go back and try another time. Okay. I have um, one residence. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, second question, just for point of information. So, since the grant has been extended, does that mean you've also extended your retirement again? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, that is a good question. No, it's a good <laughs> question, but the answer is no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because I think actually the people at Kramer Design Group are doing a great job of running with it themselves. They're just going to need a little bit of a, a nudge here and there, a little bit of information. And I fully intend to stay available for that kind of advice without having to take on the day-to-day. -day. I'm just, I'm just running out of steam for all the day-to-day -day stuff. So. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Regina, public education. All right. Oh, Howie, my dog came in just in time for me to talk. Uh, hopefully he won't bark. Um, we have kind of we haven't had a meeting since our since our last meeting, um, but we've gotten some updates. I've connected um, Keith Howard at KPL with the I maybe said this last time, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, but Keith is going to be able to get the original videos from the videographer, uh, so we will get those over to KPL. Uh, he's going to deal with it from there, thankfully, because I don't know about video things, so he's going to do it for us. Um, for the other kind of mini projects that the group has been working on, um, there is going to be conversations with um, uh, basically city staff, landscape architects, and everyone about um, plantings and signage around the mound. Um, John Shaganabi is going to be working with the tribe to get the appropriate tribal members involved because um, there's quite a few that work with na you know, natural landscapes that are in the tribe that do want to be a part of it um, and have, have uh, expressed interest in working on it. Um, we, I'm working on uh, some of the updates to the text that was on uh, Next Exit History because they talk a lot about the four corners and the project to, uh, you know, have those signified with monuments and stele and all the rest. So that's going to have to get changed. And we also have um, the information on the mound, um, which as far as I know, there is still conversation between the tribe and the city about how that information is going to be disseminated. And I think um, 
that the consensus is that the city commission might just need to be given a presentation so that they remember uh, that the project happened. Um, <laughs> that was, that's the impression that, that we kind of got, um, which, okay, you know, there's a lot of projects going on. Um, so I think that uh, I told David, I would help him with whatever he needed, but um, it probably should be coming from John Mm -hmm. Shaganabi or the appropriate tribal representative chosen and then David Brose because he has the expertise to answer the sort of nitty-gritty detail questions that would be needed of uh, when they're presenting the the knowledge you know the results of that survey so that's where we are with that okay I don't think I forgot anything other than I have a list of things to do <laughs> fair <laughs> yeah. I get that um, okay, thank you. Um, item C, Ohau, uh, Pam and Sharon, and Lene. Can I run with it, ladies? Um, item C, addition, packets too. In addition to the report, um, two things. Uh, we were not April able to um, videotape our um, storm windows episode last week, so we're gonna shoot again for it tomorrow. Okay. So far, so good. Um, what I sent out a note to everyone this morning saying it's a go unless, unless I say it's not a go because the weather's good. Um, Public Media Network came back and said that's great because it's supposed to be cloudy and cloudy is good. So that's that. It will not, the, the so we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, we do also now have a, an airing date at Public Media Network for stripping hardware, and that is May 8th. So we're now running, we've skipped the month of April. There won't be a release in April because Public Media Network could not get it scheduled in time. There, there remains some issues there, but I'm not gonna go into detail. Um, and so we have the May 8th first airing for the hardware, stripping your hardware. It will go up both on KPL and the city approximately a week later, anytime after five business days or seven business days or one week, or I, I don't remember exactly how it's, how it's worded in our agreement, but um, they did acknowledge that the city was supposed to be receiving the files and they haven't received them all. And so um, they should get them. And I have already alerted both KPL and Neil Conway about that. We don't have an earring date for storm windows yet, in part because we haven't shot it yet. And I think they're a little bit leery about assigning an earring date without having any material to edit. So that's it. Okay. Any questions for Pam? All right, um, moving on to the trades program, Sharon. Um, I just have a little bit to report there. Um, I am meeting with Amy Schmidt from KVCC from the Groves uh, next week. And we are going to be exploring having a program for a, a short program for next fall. And I think what we would like to do, I've got some strong support from an instructor on this, is do a, a, a one day program on adding basic, simple, getting the bottom sash working window rehab to, to your repertoire as a contractor. Okay. And to try to get some people trained so that they know how to do that without just saying, oh, it's gotta be a window replacement. And just say, you know, this is what you do. How to get it on the same things that we've actually been you know, put in our, our little videos, exactly those same three things, only give everybody a chance to actually work on it. Um, I have a, a, a fairly positive response from Mary Balcoma about helping us get a house through the land bank. And I know she's not allied with the land bank anymore, but she says she, she thinks it probably wouldn't be a, a problem. So we could have a place to actually work and it would probably most likely it would so be a next project fall. house. Hmm? A project house you're saying? Yeah. What we'd like is one that's got painted okay. windows that are painted shut and and, yeah. uh, you know, maybe missing ropes. And so we can actually kind of get into the basics of just getting your window working again for contractors to get them to add a skill. We may open it up to uh, um, uh, homeowners as well, but I don't know. I haven't decided on that yet. That's going to be something Amy and I will be talking about. 
but I think that'd be a really good, you know, kind of Kickstarter project to get going on from the very beginning. Okay. So I'll probably have more of a report next month after, um, you know, after she and I meet and after also the national trust launches their big white paper that should be out within the next three weeks, probably for preservation month, mm-hmm. it's going to be out. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then moving to the cemetery, we'll go with your update and then the update on the lodge. So I've been following Facebook as I do, you know, whenever I'm taking a few minutes on the throne or whatever, but, yeah. um, and people have been posting photographs of gravestones being put back upright properly in Mountain Home Cemetery. And so I emailed the, uh, the team at the city, the, you know, the people that deal with that. I said, I didn't know you guys were doing this. You're doing it. And they said, Oh yeah, we got, we've got a team of like three or four people that are trying to get them set back up. And d- so what you've got is this place where this gravestone has been sitting in the dirt with grass kind of growing around the edges for 15 years or four years or whatever. So you've got all these bare spaces. Plus you have the gravestone, the side that was in the ground is all dirty. So I said, can we look at possibly having a work day maybe in May or, or early June to scrub off the dirty face where it was in the dirt and maybe, you know, rough up the soil in the place where it was in the dirt and throw in some grass seed or something like that. I thought it'd be fun to put a little, you know, maybe a, a, an annual flower in front of each one that we, that we replant like that. I think that'd be neat just to kind of mark it for people. But anyway, so they said, yeah, well, let's, let's work out the details. But that was literally, that just happened this morning. Okay. So I was very, very excited about that. Um, and they didn't even tell me they were doing it. It's just like, oh, this is great. This is wonderful. So, um, and then I have had an offer from a property owner who lives nearby, who used to be part of the Douglas uh, West Douglas Neighborhood Association. They used to use the Sexton's Lodge as their office, as their headquarters. And um, he's very kind of dismayed to see that really nothing is happening there. And he, since he does construction, he is offering to come and do some of the work that needs to be done on the building at cost. At, um, you know, you pay for the materials, his team will do the work. And so he and I met there to yesterday. And uh, one of the things we really, really want to do, two things that really need to be done is we need to put a new ridge on top of the, the roof, which is relatively new. And we need to paint all the exterior wood. And then there's a whole list of other things that might need to be done as well. And so far I've gotten very strong, positive support for this idea from the city, from Public Works. And so we just have a lot of details to work out, but we're thinking we may end up seeing some improvement and having that place look a little bit better and getting the boarded windows unboarded. The windows are under there. They just have, the city hasn't been able to get around to boarding the, unboarding them. And then if this team is painting, they can fill in the holes where the screws held the boarding in place and they can do the work that needs to be done. And I'm thinking of changing the trim color because right now it's kind of a chocolate brown. Yeah. And I think what I'd like to do is go with something closer to the color. If you look up under the eaves, you can see that it's a warm tan sandstone is the color of the stone. And that most of what you see that's the black and the gray is actually just dirt. So I think what I'd like to do is um, go with a color similar to that, maybe a tone darker than that, and uh, and then possibly have a work day sometime in the next year or so where we just literally get people together on ladders and we scrub it. Mm-hmm. You know, not power wash it. That's not good for that type of stone. Just, no. you know, just like we used to do for the fountain, you know, yep. uh, plastic or, or natural bristle, bristle scrub brushes, running water maybe a little bit of that one soap that you use to clean horses tails, which is supposed to be really good for cleaning masonry, which I have a couple big quarts of, which would be plenty to do the whole building. Mm-hmm. So um, I think, I think that would be, that would be just a, a transformation. Um, of just that remember, building. Very visible. Just remember to work as you're cleaning from the bottom up. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 And lots of water to keep rinsing it down. Right. Yep. Yep. I mean, I was there today with an electrician looking about what it would take to upgrade the electrical so that it could be a building in active use again of some kind. So, and that would be something else I would like to look at is getting that building into some kind of active use. For years, we've discussed the possibility of making it a, a suite of small offices for very small nonprofits 
because there are five rooms there plus a large gathering room, two bathrooms and a kitchen. And, you know, for a, a, a group that just needed a small office, it might be a really great um, headquarters to use, meeting space that could be used for small meetings. You know, so I'd like to see, cause the best, I think the best protection for an old building is having it in active use. Mm -hmm. You know, having it maybe like it this. Could become, maybe it could become the home of the preservation commission and the coordinator. I, I thought about that, but I really, I don't like that idea because I think the coordinator should be embedded in CPED yeah. in the department so that you're working constantly with people. Now it could be a place where the coordinator could get away. It could be the office of the city historian. I mean, it could be a lot of different things that, and, and it could draw people in. It's barrier free with a couple of minor changes. It's barrier free on the first floor. Does so, the city have a historian? Maybe they will. Really? Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna be an informal historian. Do you mean you? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> is this your new retirement gig now? Is that what you're hinting at? <laughs> I think in a place that's a resource for people to go and to have meetings and to, you know, it'd be nice. I mean, it, I wouldn't see any reason why, if it was barrier free, why we couldn't have um, uh, HPC meetings there. Yeah. I think I'd want to do historic district commission, but HPC, that'd be a perfect place for them, for us to meet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, active use, that's the really key thing. But the first step, I think, is getting it cleaned up and, um, maybe see if we can get some new doors for the back and front doors instead of the metal doors that are there now something a little bit more attractive and appropriate but you know that's like down the road but i think that the uh the painting of the wood really really needs to be done everywhere on the exterior so okay sharon is yeah, yeah. that the building at the entrance of the yeah. uh, cemetery the big stone house yep yep the small building is the receiving vault which is where in the winter back in the day before we had backhoes, they would keep people bef until they could open up a grave and bury them. So it was a cold that, storage unit. Cold storage unit, yes, exactly. <laughs> I have ideas for that as well, but I was just so tickled to see that they had taken on standing up the gravestones. I think that's just that's great. That's splendid. That's just splendid. It's just, it's just so nice to see. Yeah. So, okay, that's my report. All right, cool. Um, Regina, Preservation Month. Well, can uh, I ask a question update? of Sharon first? Sure. Oh, sorry. Um, and Kyle, I know I owe you stuff from the email uh, for Grave Issues Squad. Um, but so do you know then when the infrastructure stuff is starting or are they doing uh, this separate of that? They've already they've started, started down on the north okay. end of the cemetery. Yep. Uh, I had okay. a call from a guy on Forbes that was very concerned. He said, did you know about this? And I said, oh yeah. So I filled him in on everything and, and I he was, he was very, very supportive. And he said, well, I want to, he had actually applied or not applied to used our grave issue squad Gmail. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want to be involved in anything you're going to be doing this year. So I said, send us, send us an email again, then, then okay. we'll know you're, you're there. So I have the list and all the, con all of that is in there in spreadsheets still. So cool. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Sorry, Josh. No, that's all right. That's all right. Go ahead. It's, it's you. It's you. Yeah, Go it's ahead. me. I know. <laughs> All right, preservation month. So I know our number one uh, thing for this month is voting again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the biggest. Sharon, I know Neil, did he go out already and do- No, filming? we haven't done any yet. I'm, I'm gonna Not get yet. back to him. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to him momentarily. Um, do you need me to do anything with that? I might, but I don't know yet until I get a hold of him. Okay. So okay. what we need to do today is to decide on- We gotta vote, yeah. <laughs> all the different awards. Um, so I figure we'll do what we did with the last round, go through each one, discuss, and then vote individually, or do we, does that sound good? Um, this That's can great. be, a, I think this can be a voice vote. It doesn't need to be a roll call vote. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, all right. All right, well, I will hand it over Start. to- to Sharon then, and we yeah. can start going through these uh, one by one, D1 through six. Okay, so I am, well, the first one is uh, nominated is the Douglas Community Association as an organization that mm -hmm. is now a hundred years old. And, uh, you know, they're, this is obviously, it's not their building, but it is a group that has a long history in Kalamazoo and has been very involved with uh, 
you know, with all sorts of people, but especially African Americans in the city. So um, anyway, this is what they presented us to. Did I, you know, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But um, are you all familiar with the Douglas Community Association? Yes. Okay. Well, they she did a good job of doing a really short and sweet history of it. Mm -hmm. um, and their building itself is getting close to being 50 years old now. I think it's 1980. So it's getting really close to being 50 years old. Yeah. So I guess the question is, do we want to give them an award for a long-lived organization? Yeah. Are there questions? any questions? Pam? Um, do we have a category for an institutional award that does not include a building? Yes. Mm -hmm. Individuals or institutions? Yep. Great. Um, second question is, I think I noticed that the book was also part of the nomination and I've not seen it. I don't know, I, I would hesitate to make an award for a book that we, that you have not had an opportunity to review. If in fact, that is part of the nomination. I thought it was, but. No, I think, I think the, the publication is just uh, an illumination of the organization's history. Yeah. rather than being the object like the ladies library book the object of the nomination was the book yeah this this right. is this is for the the community association itself so I where did see. i get the idea that the, it was for the book as well that had to have been in the well I mean, the, the book is mentioned a couple of times and yeah, the book the book is out i haven't physically seen it i googled it and looked it up on amazon um, but couldn't really read a ton of it. So I haven't physically seen it yet. Yeah, um, but, it, but it, I had the same confusion where it almost like, but I read it back again. And the book of course is mentioned and technically some of the text that's in the actual letter is from the book that she wrote because it matches the Amazon description. So it's some of that is kind of carried over. Um, but I think that's where some of that back and forth comes from because I think she she may have used some of the shortened history, like Sharon said, the shortened history from the book in the nomination. But that did make it a little confusing because it focuses a lot on the past. I was a little disappointed that it didn't mention more of the present work that the group is actually being done, which I think is some of the confusion when I first read it because it does read like a historical view uh, of the organization versus like there is mention of the up to date. Uh, there's a couple of lines that talk about the community health center and, and those present things, but it does, I, I feel like I wish she would have put in more about the present work that they're doing instead of relying on us knowing <laughs> that the organization is doing present work. So I was yeah. a little disappointed in the letter or in the submission because I felt like some stuff was missing. That it was, I mean, the fact that the most recent stuff is the health center, like I know they're doing more than that, but we know that just based on community context. Except I'm not sure that all the preservation commissioners do know that. Well, That's and that was the saying. other part of it. Like I, I felt like there was maybe, I don't know. It was I mean, I know bit. a fair amount about it, but I'm sure I know, I don't know everything by a long shot. And I'm guessing that the newer yeah. commissioners probably don't have even as much as I do. Um, so I thought that more than a single page would have been appropriate, both in terms of the history, which is very long and involved, but like Regina said, for the present as well. And I'm just a member of the public, but thank you for hearing me. Was I the only one that read it that way? Did everybody else read it differently? I, I just read it as a nomination for the organization, but then I know Sonia a little bit, so you know the yeah. nominator right and and when i work the precincts that's where i'm usually at is over at douglas so i you know i know it pretty well because of that as well as trying to do more to get the old douglas community building reused in some productive way yeah so i'm kind of over overstocked on that but um <laughs> so i guess the, the question is do we want to honor the douglas community association for its long history 
as an organization, as an institution. Based on the application, right? Correct. Any other questions, comments, discussion? I'll raise my hand again, if I may. Pam? I, I know enough about the organization to know it deserves a reward. An okay. award, a yes. reward and award. Mm -hmm. Because it's been here for a long, long time and they've done good work. But I, but I think that the application does not tell enough of the story for folks who are unfamiliar with the organization. And um, I, okay. Go back, go back to the nominator and ask for more. And say next year? Or next I guess, week? I guess I disagree <laughs> with that. I, I think it gives, I, I disagree with that. I, I think it gives a good targeted highlight of the importance and the influence of the institution as an organization. I, I and guess. The, the nomination form does request that the information in the nomination be kept to one page. Yeah. Okay, then. It just made me laugh. Seems like there's plenty of information on their website because I certainly was not very familiar with them, but it says they've got 21 active programs at least. Wow. I'm impressed and we live in Stewart right next to it. We don't have nearly that many going. <laughs> so do we, do we just, want to vote on call it? For a motion? Are we? Yeah, somebody, somebody needs to make a motion if we're there. I mean, if there's more. If we are, I don't want to presume. I, I guess I, I guess I'm, I, I, I guess I'm missing uh, what the objection is because, to me, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know anything about the organization myself, but in reading this one pager, it does talk about you know the history of the program and its mission. So. What's the point of the so what's the what's what award would they be nominated for if it's not a physical oh it'd be one award that we have is for institutions or individuals yeah so it'd be the the organization as a whole can be awarded mm -hmm. for work in preservation for, for their for their historical efforts in Kalamazoo right right yeah. Well, I think the, institution, I think the yeah. one page it tells talks about the the their historical purpose and mission and their the things they've done, um, and the things that they're currently doing since their inception. Uh, looks like in nineteen nineteen. So I mean, um, I I would vote that they would that you know they would qualify. So do we have a motion? Not yet. Somebody needs to make Not a yet. motion. <laughs> or I'll, or I'll, if there's no further discussion, I'll call for a motion. Well, I motion to uh, you know have them approved and nominated and awarded the, because uh, this is the only one we have for this category, right? We have another one for an individual. For individual. For individual and institutions. But it doesn't it's not matter. To one per category. Yeah. Right. As we, many in one category as we want or as few as we want. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I would nominate them. Yeah. I mean, I would, what am I doing? Motion. I motion to nominate them for the award. <laughs> is, is there, so to be clear, the, the motion would be to approve them, approve the nomination. Yes, approve, make an I award. To approve the nomination. Make an award. Yep. Yes, to award the nomination. Is there a second? second all in favor aye any opposed okay motion passes um, okay moving on to uh, d2 1312 oakland the state hospital the state hospital gate cottage state this cottage. is just absolutely this are these are the old pictures yeah 
Okay. And this is what it looks like now. They have put a new roof on. They've Sharon, repaired the can I can I pause you for a minute? Would it yeah. help for the ones with pictures if you do share your screen? Let me because that's what we would normally do in a meeting, but I don't you yeah. don't have to. I'm just curious if that would help for everyone. Or does everybody have it up in front of them? We go. Just there we go. Okay. Well, I was toggling between Got it? The two, but <laughs> can yeah. you guys see it now? Yep. Okay. So these pictures were from 2019 um, when we had another project going on there. And you can see there's a little piece of this wonderful trim up here missing. Um, the paint's in rough shape. That in 2018, they did some repairs of the chimney because it was really quite, quite badly eroded. And they put on a new roof. So this is what it looked like before any work started. Okay, there you can see that piece of missing trim better. Mm -hmm. And this is what it looks like today. They fixed that piece of missing trim. They gave it, we, we based the colors on a colorized postcard and two or three different black and white photographs that we had from pre-1900. And the determination that we came to was that it was a uh, light colored building with dark trim, as opposed to what it had been for the past probably 25 years which is a lemon yellow with white trim. So yeah. we decided to go back to what we thought were more appropriate colors. And just in passing, we mentioned the cresting, which was on all of the building, this wonderful copper stuff. And um, uh, the, the guys at the state hospital ran with it. They found a local company that makes it, that makes one that's a very close replica for what we know was on there. And so they just splurged and went ahead and did that. So all, the, and there's a new furnace in, but the, this nomination is for the, um, the exterior rehabilitation of the gate cottage to, uh, and it was much needed. Yeah. So, and I don't know how many physical awards we will be giving out because of this, because there was a number of people involved, but the nomination was from the architecture firm that handled the specifications. Yeah, I think they did a great job. I think this is a fantastic project. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I was, I was very happy to be going through my emails as I was in the process of beginning to write a nomination and realized that, oh, Shlay Nelson has already done a nomination. This is great. Yeah. So I was surprised, or I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised that it wasn't your name on the nomination because you had yeah. talked about doing it. And when I saw it, I was like, wait a minute, that's not Sharon. <laughs> oh, it's not. It is. I was just, I was just so thrilled that they were, um, you know, they really wanted to do that. So and I think that every so often we really need to pat the state on the back for going ahead and spending the money and doing it the right way. Yeah. You know, they don't, they don't always have the money to do that. And I think in this case, they really did a nice job, a very nice job. Yeah. So, and it has stopped all the damage that was ongoing inside from water leaking in from the roof. So this is, this is a good thing. It's now sealed up nice and tight again. Any comments or discussion? So what's the use now? Um, it's still just a little museum. It's um, it's not empty. It's got wonderful furniture in it. It's got some interpretive materials. It's um, some of the furniture is stuff that came from the state hospital, either from the cottages that were out on Asylum Lake or from this building itself. So a lot of the furniture originated with the hospital. Uh, and it's got scrapbooks and other things like that. It used to be run by the Citizens League, which were in support of the state hospital. And they would have it open three or four times a year for tours. There's a, an event they do at the hospital every summer called Summerfest. And that was, um, they, uh, they always had it open for tours during Summerfest just for that one day. This is when the patients who have ground passes can get out. Their families can come and visit them. They have games, they have a uh, raffles, they have food. You know, it's just kind of a get outdoors and enjoy yourself in the summer sort of day. So it's really very nice. But, and they would have it open for that. But lately, nothing, the only reason people have been going in and out is me and the people make sure the alarm system is working. Mm -hmm. So. Other comments. Furniture in there is beautiful. It, gorgeous. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Is there a motion to award the nomination? I'll motion. I'll second. 
All in favor? Aye. Uh, please do voice. I, I actually can't see people with the screen share up. I can't see. Oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Does that mess things up for you, Josh? It totally does, but that's I'm all sorry. right. I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, I, all in favor? I. 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 Any I. opposed? I. That was everybody. Okay, good. Was okay. there was there an opposition? No. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. move, moving to D3, um, 106 Thompson, the Col uh, Kalamazoo College uh, Admissions Building. Yeah, this is, um, I think she did a really good job of uh, writing up what was done and a little bit of a history of the building. Um, this is, this building is in the West May Hill Historic District. And so all of the exterior work was reviewed and approved by the Historic District Commission at their meetings. So this is all, we didn't, don't have anything to say about the interior, but I have to say that the, the team that was working on it brought me through there and uh, asked my opinion. And, you know, they really did everything they could to keep as much as they, as much as they could. I'd wish they'd been able to keep more of the, the second Powabic tile bathroom, but it just didn't work out. So this is the photo pages I put together. I've got some more I can show you. Um, this is uh, the, these are before pictures on top. The after picture is on the bottom that shows both the garages and the main part of the building. And the uh, a great deal of the reason for putting these additions in front of the garage bays was to allow barrier free access so they could ramp up just that little bit that needed to get into the main house and to provide some more workspace. So this is entirely filled with offices. Apparently, everybody likes it a lot when they come and they go through their admissions process here, they're very, very happy with it. So um, let's see, I wanted, I wanna hold on just a second. I need to open. Come on, I'm just getting to the, they're big pictures. They're like seven gigs each. So they're really big pictures. Move, where's my share screen? Come on, I want a share screen. Here we go up here. Where'd it go? I'm looking for my share screen control, sorry. Can you see the pictures, the, the new pictures I put up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. can still see your screen. Okay, can you see, okay. There's two uh, of the same picture right next to each other. It's the okay. one in the original file and then the same photo okay. that you opened up. Okay, let's see if I can go, there we go. So there we go, so there's, um, okay, there's the, this is the interior with the staircase. They this All this stuff is original material, the rails and stuff, that's the way it was originally. And Pam, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, is that the original floor? It looks like, yeah, it's, it's also Poivre. Yep. Yep. And uh, they have the fireplace. This is, they, I think, I think they did a really, a really what nice. What is that? Room. What room is that? This is, um, it's not there. I think it's back the other way. The dining room? Really? Towards the kitchen? I think so. Whoa. No, actually, yeah, that is a change, isn't it? Yeah. Pam used to own this house when it was a B&B. &B. And she lived there, too. And she lived there, too. So, so she's trying to it. figure it out. And I haven't I haven't been there in person. Otherwise, I would know. May okay, I make one, one comment on the application? Yeah, Pam. The, the correct historic name, just for the record, is not the Hall House, which is my family name, which we named the business after, but it is the Vanderhorst house. Mm. Henry so not was, only built it, but he lived there. That and was his home. Yeah, it's, he was the original owner, he and his family. Yeah, so just that needs to be part of the record, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, we'll be sure that's what goes on the um, right board certificate. Right, Henry that's why house. I brought it up. Yep, yep. So this, this picture here with the little bench in the top picture to the right, there's the um, there's that little archway that used to lead to a side door. It was kind of an open connection between the garage and the main house. And that is now 
this little window here, they kept that round shape coming out to the outside, which I really think worked very nicely. This is the interior of what was the garages. So you can see into the, um, into the ramped area, the entry area there. And into the main lobby, yeah, or the original yep. lobby. Yep, and then this is the staircase. This is a before picture of the staircase. And this is, these are old pictures of what it looked like before the work began, I think. No, that's when it's done. I'm sorry, that's when it was finished. Yep. So wow. just more, they did, they did a, I think a really outstanding job. They definitely kept the spirit of the, of the house while making it, bringing it to a new use as their admission center. Yeah. Definitely more warm and inviting than the offices that they were using up on campus. A lot more homelike. So, do you know, Sharon, if they kept the ceiling mural in what was the study, the original office just off the main landing? I don't see anything. Well, that that one looks into it. No, it doesn't look like it's there. It doesn't look. Yeah, I don't. I'm not yeah. seeing it. Yeah. They so say I, Henry painted that. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a it's it's a wonderful use and. It could probably go back to being a, fa a family home again someday, but most likely not. It's going to be this for a long time. Yeah, I would imagine. But yeah. any yeah. comments or discussion? I actually walked through it with Andrew Grayson, who's on the Historic District Commission. He was very proud of it, showing it off when they first moved in. And his office is one of the old bathrooms upstairs. Yeah, isn't he like up over the over the garage I think I thought it was towards West Main but I could be wrong. it might be because that one bathroom was big that was big and they really tried I mean when I went through with them I asked could they save the Powabic tile and reuse it somewhere else and they they tore a chunk off for me and I took it home and I everything I could think of and it's like no that was set so well in and concrete. so permanently in concrete there's no way so I now have a stepping stone in my garden that's a chunk of the Pelopic tile from uh, cool. from this building. So, I was gonna I was gonna try to buy it so I could reuse it, but no, there's no, I there's no way to get it. Happen. It was done really well the first time, as Henry tended to do things. So yeah. it's not going to be done. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the the Henry Vanderhorst House, now the KV K, K College Admissions Department. Yep. Um, is there a motion? Can I get a motion to award the nomination? I move to award the nomination of the Kalamazoo College Welcome House. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Uh, moving to D4, 527 West South. Okay, this is the exterior rehab. This is in the South Street, Binary of South Street Historic District. And so all the work was done with the uh, review and approval of the Historic District Commission. The Upjohn Institute bought the house with the idea of expanding office space. And they went through two or three different iterations of how what they wanted to have happen there. Um, but in the lot, because there's a garage on the site that originally they were thinking would be a guest cottage for economists that came in to spend a month or two with them. And then they decided they really didn't want somebody living alone back there who wasn't familiar with the city. And so it is now their recording studio. So when they do mit when they do things and, and they you know are in contact with groups they've got a, a nice sound dampened uh, building to use and they did a really wonderful job on the garage it's just can you guys see the the mm -hmm. screen okay mm -hmm. I'm gonna do mm -hmm. this and see if I can make it a little bigger nope I can't I can't I can't anyway so um and then this is the back end originally there was this porch that had been added in the late 1960s. So it was not original to the house. The railing and some of the trim on the porch had actually come from the people's church when it was torn down, the one that used to be where the ladies library parking lot is today. 
and um, they wanted to they wanted to be able to originally the idea was to add an elevator there that didn't work out, but they um, and they decided they didn't need a lift, so they just kind of rearranged everything at the back and put this addition on that gave lots of light, very much a sunroom type of feel to this. This room is very much like a sunroom now. So it has a very much an open porch kind of feel, but it's an interior room. They added an elevated walkway that achieves the, uh, the purpose of having a barrier free ramp without actually being what something that looks like an addition. It's just part of the landscaping and it goes from the parking right near the parking lot all the way up to a side entry. And then at the back of that, I'm not sure you can see it. How can we make that bigger? Oh, here we go. Um, come on. Here we go. We can do it. Right there, that one little chunk of the porch railing on the entry porch is from that same, from the porch, the, uh, the old people's church railing that was an interior choir loft railing or something like that. So that was kind of cool. I think I think they did an excellent job. This is the um, this is the door that takes you to a staircase, but also to a. I think that's actually a lift as well in there that just goes the half floor up if you need that. Um, parking is all behind the building in the Upjohn Institute parking lot that faces Lovell Street, and there's a gate through here from the back. So the front door can be used. That was one of the questions I asked. The front door is absolutely operable. But most of the time, the entry will be through the back door, which makes perfect sense, considering it's people that work at the Upjohn Institute that'll be in and out of there all the time. So, let's see what else have we got. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay. And, yep, so this is, the, again, there's that little bit of, bit of the rail that they just... Reuse this little porch on the side here can only be reached from outside or if you open one of the windows and climb out. But that was uh, that was some, an addition I think from sometime in the 30s or the 40s. Okay. So that has its own historical integrity. And this is the garage. This is what it was before they started. And they they when they took the front off and this this door <clears throat> off, they found this this uh, curved top that had originally been in front of the garage door. So they kind of restored the front facade of the garage, the way that it looked more back in the historic period. And like I said, but it, those are not functional doors. This is just a, it's a recording studio now, which I think is a really brilliant use for it. So this is the way, and they also did major work on these pillars. The pillars themselves were fine, but the bases had deteriorated. And so they had to order um, brand new precast bases to fit under those. And uh, each base weighed 500 pounds. Jeez. So, and it makes sense because it's holding a lot of weight there. That's actually yeah, load. They're, they're load bearing. Yeah, those mm -hmm. columns are not just for pretty. So, and then this is the view from the back of the parking of the Upjohn Institute parking lot. Um, the top pictures before <laughs> and the bottom is below. So, nice work. This was nominated by Deacon Hammond. Mm -hmm. And the contractors were May contracting. Um, they are also working on the Butterman House, which is two doors to the east, doing some upgrades, but nowhere near as substantial an upgrade as what we had happening here at this house. This house had been, for those of you who weren't familiar with, this has had been the Hospital Hospitality House, the mm -hmm. Ronald McDonald style house for Kalamazoo, where families who had someone in the hospital could come and stay for free and have a home-like atmosphere to live in while they were, um, you know, visiting and, and being with their loved ones. Mm -hmm. So. Any, any questions or comments? No. Would someone like to make a motion? I will. I'll, I'll motion. <laughs> Regina? I think it's lovely. So motion to approve the award for 527 West South Street slash Deacon Mahanan. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second, actually. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, and... Continuing with 527 West South, moving to the interior. 
right. Yeah, should mm -hmm. I have specified exterior yeah. in my no, motion? That's good. I got it. No, okay. We're, we're going through these point by point. Okay. So we're okay. So, so this is this is the only interior nomination we got this year. Probably the first one we've had in two or three years, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea there was to make it, you know, to keep the exterior looking as much as it as it had in the past, but the interior really needed to be opened mm -hmm. up so it would be more usable space. So um, this is the view down the back of the of the house. Let me see, what are we looking at there? We're looking at uh, the house to the east through this door, and this is a view to the south. So this would this wall over here with the tall windows would be east, and this is the south view, the room that kind of looks like a sunroom from the outside, and has that same flavor of being a, a you know, a porch, an open space. So they really, really open things up. It was a series of small spaces that was meant to accommodate anywhere from two to five families that were staying there. And so they really wanted for the hospitality house, they wanted that sort of homey family space, but that doesn't work as well for a, a um, you know, the Upjohn Institute and what they do. They have meetings and things. So these are the same rooms um, they, they changed things around a little bit, moved the walls a little bit where they needed to, to accommodate and make adequate space for the people that would be working there. They left the vast majority of the trims around the ceiling was left in place as was most of the floor, uh, the floor decorations, but they opened up, like you can see in this room, this is the bay window with the Christmas tree and the, um, this wall has been opened up now into the hallway and this is a, a, an office, a really sweet office. So this just gives you the before and after types of views. Um, they did make a lot of use of putting transom windows up high in the wall just to keep lots of light coming into the house or into mm -hmm. the building. This is the a view down the hallway. This is uh, before when a hospitality house and this is just the hallway which they open up into a longer hallway. All of these little cabinets and drawers still open and work. Um, they added, I, oh, sorry, Sharon. Go ahead. Oh, when I saw this picture of the hallway, I was like, I want to live in this hallway. Yeah, isn't it gorgeous? It's, yeah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> the little house for Howie right there. Yeah, he could sit right there. <laughs> Bark at people and scare them. I thought that was a stuffed animal. Exactly. Anyway, um, and the stair, they had to bring the height of the stair up to a code compliant level of 42 inches. And so they left all of the original stair and rail and added a very nicely sculpted addition on the top that meets the, uh, the, the code for a commercial building. Yeah. So the original is there and the, I can't really see it in the pictures, but the, um, these little added risers have a little bit of the same sculpting that you see in the, uh, the newels or the, the spindles down below. So they've got just a little bit of fancy to them that wasn't there before. This is the front door area. This 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 light fixture is just wonderful. It's just so not historic, but it's so clearly not historic that it actually adds a certain charm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that that the the delineation between historic and not historic is the blending is good, but it's very obvious. Oh yes. Um, yeah. yeah. It's not like they tried to fake it or go cheap, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So this, this is the front office that goes right along the front of the house and has the bay window on the side. And uh, so these windows go all the way to the floor. So there's <clears> tons <throat> of north light coming into this office and it's absolutely, it's a wonderful place to work. Um, some of the offices upstairs were bedrooms. And so they've become, you know, just simple offices. They're not actually working out of them yet. <laughs> Just, I think she, I think they were telling me that the first three or four people are moving in now, so it looks very bare still. It looks like this has just been finished, and this is just the, just the, you know, the model house or the display house. But they've done, you know, they've they've done it well. Um, they've redone. They don't have as many bathrooms. This is to show that at one point they discovered there was really substantial rot under one of the rooms, and they had to do a lot more structural work than they had originally anticipated. So, um, but now this is like a, uh, it's, it's not a kitchen or anything. It's a uh, copy room, copy room and work room. Okay. Um, 
another staff lounge and meeting alcove upstairs. Yeah, so it's a it's a nice, and they still do have either two or three bathrooms. I can't remember which, and plenty of room, nice and airy and open. Uh, they're not showing as many as the of the glass walls as they as they have installed. Like here between the two rooms, there's actually this is a window, a glass window, floor to ceiling between the rooms that I walked right into. Because I thought it was like I was going into the next room. And it's like, no, there's a window there. So now it's got my nose prints on it. But, uh, yeah. Any comments or discussion? So my stepmom used to work there when it was the hospitality house. So I asked her what she would like to see preserved. And she did mention a ceiling medallion around a light fixture in the they're front all room. There. All the ones, they're there. They are there. The ceiling medallions are beautifully restored. You know, I think there's two or three altogether. So they don't show in these pictures, but the ceiling medallions are there. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. They kept the pretty stuff. Other comments or discussion? Josh? Yes, Pam. I would argue that all of the work does not meet the Secretary of Interior standards because it appears to me that there have been many spatial relationships altered by the work. Mm -hmm. And those are part of what characterizes a house of this period. Um, without seeing pre and post construction drawings, it would be hard to tell. And it is difficult to tell from just looking at photographs. Um, but after a number of years of working on tax credits that addressed building interiors, as well as exteriors, I would say that there's some cause for concern in that regard. Mm -hmm. I was going to question that. Don't get me wrong, the house is beautiful. It yeah. is. Um, but if we're talking about this is stuff that is historic and to bring it back to its original um, purpose or its original um, status, I think they did a lot of upgrades that are a little too modern. Uh, love them. Don't get me wrong. Wish I could live there. But I don't know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if that is the standard for this organization and the award. The out exterior, I think they did hang on to the historical uh, function that it originally was built in, but the interior, it just seems that they did, you can tell they did take some walls down um, and uh, put in a lot of modern things that may not have been original to that. My experience says that it is not totally inappropriate to insert modern conveniences for a new use or an alternative use. Um, however, um, I don't know, I don't have a strong sense that they actually did an inventory of character defining features for the interior and responded in an appropriate way, um, particularly with regard to the spatial relationships. There may be some other things too, because we don't have a lot of before and after. And particularly, we don't have any plans that show what walls were removed, what was reconfigured and that kind of thing. Well, and building off what Pam said at one level, um, you know, the, the, the modern update is part and parcel to adaptive reuse and adaptive reuse is one of the key components of historic preservation. But at the same time, um, what Pam and Lene are, are both saying uh, is true as well, especially of Pam's um, argument of the Secretary of the Interior Standards. And it was one of my questions. It's not that they necessarily did anything wrong. I just don't know. I started when I was going through and maybe others had this, I was finding myself getting lost 
between the pictures of the old and the new work. And I just, because so much had been changed, I could no longer match like the wall corner with the wall corner. And that's what made me start thinking how, how much of this, because I don't, I don't know what the house looks like probably before it became a hospitality house. Cause I'm guessing that there were like those little kitchenettes and those things that makes sense for what they were doing for the hospitality house. But I wasn't sure how much was changed for, to make it go back to pre hospitality or, you know, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. I might not be making sense, but there. What, what, what happened to accommodate the hospitality house, which among other things was the addition of more ba bathrooms. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and what was, what was left the same. Um, I've got on the screen right now, I've got the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, and the standards are the 10 basic principles created to help preserve the distinctive character of a historic building and its site while allowing for reasonable change to meet new needs. These standards are applied to projects in a reasonable manner, taking into consideration economic and technical feasibility. Mm -hmm. So I usually say this is to bring a historic building into an efficient contemporary use while respecting its historic character. So, I mean, so does it meet that definition of the secretary's standards of it um, while allowing for reasonable change to meet new needs or does it go beyond that and make more changes than is absolutely necessary? So if necessary? I had to, so if I had to compare it I would compare it to the prior building that we just voted on. They did modernization to that admission building, but they kept a lot of the integrity of how, what of its original um, parts of the house. Um, the, the this this house here. I, I mean, it just looks like they gutted it and put up new walls and made it really uh, modern, albeit both of them made it, made them functionable for 2021. But the first one kept a lot of the original uh, items in the home. They just polished them up. And that to me, in my mind, is considered historical restoration as opposed to the interior. Because we're not talking about the exterior. I think they did great for the exterior. But for this interior, I just think, in my opinion, they did a lot and took away a lot of the original items that were and how the house was originally configured. Um, so I guess, you know, you want to, benchmark yourself on what you would consider historical I would compare those two the the admission house it, they made it modern but they kept all the original things and they opened up some spaces too so that they have larger spaces than what was there originally and in in this building I believe they really they opened up between the rooms but they didn't really change a lot of walls they just repurposed them. Like how I don't do know. If you do that? Pardon? How do you how do you open up rooms without changing walls? Opening up rooms um, means like the like the oh, I told oh. you that I, I nearly walked through one of the windows. It was a window between two rooms where there had not been a door before. And they just put a glass window, very heavy duty glass, thank goodness. Um uh, between the two rooms just to open up that, that line of sight because the room itself was relatively small and that added more the, the the feeling of more space without actually taking down a wall and they did that in two or three different locations in the house right. um, this one right here that I'm showing right now this you can see the um the little diagram there uh, that maybe anyway but they they so they they you can see places where they just added like right here, this is the same room that was there. This is the same room that was there. This is the same room, but they just added these little windows that go between the rooms. So it's, it's, it is glass. There has been added, there has been transoms added at um, above you know, the top part of the walls, again, to just keep light moving through the building as much as possible. So, I mean, it, they did make changes, absolutely no question. They made some, some real changes. 
but there's not much of the footprint that's really changed in terms of where the rooms are until you get to the back of the house, which was also the most cobbled up because that was where bathrooms were added, kitchen was added, moved out of the basement into the upstairs, all that kind of thing. So there's a lot of um, a lot of work that had already been done that, that, you know, that they were just trying to redo and keep it um, a useful space for their purpose. And uh, at the same time, you know, keep as much of the characters they could. They did keep, you know, the all the crown molding, all the fancy trim inside, all the window casings, all the floor moldings, all of that is still the original material. What about the floors, Sharon? Um, the floors where they could not salvage the floors, they salvaged wood out of them, used them to work on other floors, and then put carpeting down. So they're not all original floors, but they did try to make use of and reuse as much of the um, flooring that was available and was sound as they could. Let me, let me, if I may, just elaborate a little bit on, on why I made the comment about changing the spatial relationships. Particularly when I saw the view from the back of the house, straight down the hallway, past, past Howie's little cubby, to the front door, I went, that would have never been constructed that way. Because when you entered a grand house like that, from the front door, you would never be allowed to see through the corridor all the way down into what you would refer to as the service rooms, service. the kitchen and the pantry and that kind of thing. That's a that's a character defining feature of those kinds of homes. Yep, it's the higher and spaces. I suspect there are some others like that, but without more information, it's really difficult to tell. And for a house like that, those kinds of things are important. Um, so my recommendation would be to send it back and ask for more information for a reconsideration of next year. Um, and then, then you would know. The picture that I have right here is what Pam's talking about. This is a view from the back of the house and what you're seeing in the distance there is the front door. Yeah. yeah. There would be a swinging door there or a hinged door, you know, that, that could, you know, with a knob or something like that. Yep. Um, but it also appears to me, just based on what I'm seeing right there, that there are other walls that originally existed that are also gone. Maybe well, it's no, this is this part when you see these windows here. That's the addition. That's the addition. This is all the new part. Yeah. This is the new part. Pretty much, not quite, but pretty close to those cupboards is the right. original house. And then past that is the addition. So here's another thing about the way this has been carried out. The, the new addition to the property should be very clearly distinguished as new. This looks to me like it's all been constructed as a single unit, right? There is, there doesn't appear to be any real clear distinction about where old stops and new begins. The exterior is really an easy yes, because the changes were guided by the local district commission. But the local district commission doesn't go inside, so I think it bears a little bit closer scrutiny. Mm -hmm. So we we actually still have a, a lot to get through tonight. Still, so I'm going to ask for somebody to make a motion. Right? You can. The motion can be to deny the award, to approve the award, to request more information. I mean. The motion can be whatever you want to motion, but I'm I'm gonna call for a motion from the commission. I move to request more information on the approval of the interior renovations. Is there a second? I'll second. I guess my question oh. is, are, well, now we can have we can have discussions. Yeah, yes. Regina, Regina seconded, so we can have discussion. What? 
so are they do they all have an opportunity to submit additional information well the thing is that if at this point in time if we ask for we would be asking them for additional information and to resubmit next year yep. oh okay so we would not be turning it down we would just be saying we would like to see more of a comparison between what was there before and what is there now. Oh, okay. Well, and then I second that. Regina already did. Oh, sorry. Did. Me. Um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, so the motion is to request more information and have the applicant resubmit. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Got a question. Do we inform the applicant what they need to put in the resubmission? Yeah, I'll, I'll send them a, a, yep. a no, probably an email. I mean, normally it'd be a letter, but probably an email to them mm -hmm. saying that the, the commission did not deny the, the uh, nomination, but wanted to see more information to compare um, the footprint and the interior plans that were there originally with the current, uh, the finished building. Yeah, yeah. Because they so. do have to show the new as completely, let's be obvious, what's the blend from the old to the, the new, the way I understand the historic preservation guidelines. The standards say it should be distinguished in some way, yes. 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 Looks um, like they blended it. And anything else with D5? With the interior of 527? Okay, moving on to D6. And I'll give this one to Regina, actually. Oh, I was going to say, do you want to talk about it? Nope, you totally uh, can't. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I put in a nomination for an individual that I think all of us know, maybe, um, and, uh, it was motivated in part by, uh, my desire to make sure that Sharon had a fantastic retirement year and that we were able to, uh, give her, her, her due and, uh, and all and all the rest. Um, I found, uh, I said to Josh, I was like, I don't, I don't even know where to start with some of this because I have not known Sharon very long compared to the length of time that a lot of people have known Sharon. Um, but uh, I tried to put what I could in, in the nomination for her. And I, I'm assuming Josh said, I, I won't vote on this because I put in the nomination. So I, I don't know that I, would be I don't know that either of us can because yeah. we really submitted the nomination. But yeah, but yeah, can as, we? As, yeah, as, yeah this, is, this, is, okay. this is administrative. This is fine. Okay. So, yeah, I wasn't sure. At the at the end of the day, Regina and I were were talking and you know, we felt that um you know, Sharon was very deserving of an individual award for historic preservation since, you know, over the past decades, she has really guided it in Kalamazoo. So. I really appreciate this. This is, uh, this is nice. <laughs> it's a nice, you know, uh, frosting on the cake. Mm -hmm. uh, Can I make a comment? Yeah, absolutely, Pam. I think it's a great, a great award. And just for those of you who haven't known Sharon as long as I have, and a lot of other people have known her way longer than I have, but I've known Sharon since the 1980s when we met at an MHPN conference. We were actually in school together and never met each other mm. um, because there was a big, it was a big school. Yeah. And um, she, the first time I remember working with her was when she was, I believe she was sitting on the Historic District Commission and I was chairing this commission, the Preservation Commission, and asked her to help us put together the city's first preservation plan. And she jumped on board and was the best partner that I could have hoped to have had. So 
I am really glad to see that you've done this. And I think she's very deserving. Any other comments or discussion? Okay, I'm going to call for a motion. <laughs> Lene, I think you're talking about your muted. Yeah. yeah. A motion to nominate to uh, award Sharon Ferraro uh, with the award. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah. And thank you, Sharon. So, okay, cool. Um, that's everything. Can we stop screen sharing? Yes. All right. I think I can do that. Give me. <laughs> oh, no, I need the packet. Uh, I'm not sure. Give me a second. There we go. Screen sharing. Stop share. There it is. Yay. Better? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so now moving on to G, designation and sites. And in your packet, this is item E, the review of the draft letter um, to propose a study committee report for City Hall. Um, and for this one, I'm going to hand it over to, well, Sharon and Pam. Um, or Pam and Sharon, whoever wants to kind of start with it. Josh, could I ask one question about the preservation awards? You may, it, and it's probably um, the same. It's probably the same question that I just popped in my head. Like, how is this going to work? But totally yeah, exactly. Virtual. When yeah. are they going to be made, and by whom, and to whom, and and so the time is set aside for a Zoom uh, on May twenty sixth. Sharon, am I remembering yeah. that right? Yep. Yeah, starting a little after five, probably. Um, I think the only thing that we now, so since Neil hasn't started doing any of the video stuff, uh, we'll have to connect in with him on video stuff and now do all of it, see what we can do. Um, and then uh, I think, Sharon, we just have to figure out what the city's view is on uh, whether or not you or someone would be in a central place like commission chambers where you could easily broadcast and you mm -hmm. would be speaking about the awardees in a historic place um, because I am gonna guess at this point with the way that rates are in the state and particularly in our areas that there's not gonna be any sort of gathering. Oh. Uh, so, and I'm fine with that. Um, uh, so it's, does that kind of... Yep. Yeah, I, we're, that's we're kind of what we sketched out. And I think that that's going to be what we're going to end up doing. Yeah, lots of details need to be worked out, like scheduling Neil to make the videos. And we did have a very enthusiastic uh, acceptance from First Baptist. If we wanted to do it from their sanctuary, mm -hmm. we okay. could, which I think would be kind oh, of fun. That'd be neat. Um, and then we'll, uh, and I don't know whether we as a group could meet and I'll take or whether we'd be separate. I don't know. We have a lot of details to work out, but uh, Regina and I will get together for lunch in Bronson Park again and work everything out. Okay. So if I remember correctly, Regina said May 26th is the target date to do Wednesday. it? Wednesday. Yeah, it's already scheduled. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the Zoom Wednesday. was set a couple months ago, maybe. Sharon, so Sharon uh, got yeah. us in <laughs> so that we would have a spot. Yeah. No, but yeah, I, I realized that once we hit the end of everything, I'm sorry, I didn't say that from the top, but right. um, so yeah, we'll have those detail things to iron out now that we have everything decided, um, but yeah, it will be virtual. Yeah, Wednesday, May 26th, 4.30 is when we will sign on, um, and then it'll probably be around, you know, we'll probably start around five, a little bit after five, so Yep, there will be no Tony cookies. No guacamole. Yeah, you'll have to supply your own cookies no hummus. Uh, for yourself. Um, but <laughs> no lemonade. So okay. I'm sure we can find an interesting place to do it from if we want to. Yeah. I think it would be nice to have at least two people as the presenters. Um, I think it'd be really awkward for me to present myself an award. <laughs> 
think so, uh, too. So we'll, 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 we'll take we care can, of that. We yeah. can figure all that out. We'll, so, yeah. yep. we'll take care of that. Because I'm, I'm happy to participate again. So. Yay. Um, cool. All right. Now moving on to the draft letter. Um, one thing that Sharon suggested that I add to the initial draft that I sent to Josh and Sharon was um, that the that the commission would be pleased to uh, this is the second to the last paragraph the commission would be pleased to address uh, a city commission meeting of the whole which is I believe what happens before a public meeting is that correct Sharon yep yep they meet it either 5 30 or six o'clock and right. they these tend to be topical meetings um, to kind of bring everybody up to speed what they had been doing is meeting in groups of three what three two and two mm -hmm. and getting briefed on topics but that is something that is not as transparent and open as they want it to be so now they do the meeting of the whole and that is usually broadcast or cable cast yep so yeah now yeah. i've asked i have i've asked i know we want to go through a public process for this but I've also asked the uh, city attorney and have not gotten a response back yet, whether we need commission permission to do a study or whether we can just go ahead without getting their permission just to do a study. But I'm waiting for a response on that. Well, have we ever had permission to do a study in the past? I don't think so. I, but I was gonna say under the, under the 1966 act, no. Right. right. And then no, this is for this is for uh this would be under PA 169. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 but I mean through throughout yeah. the Yeah. The, I mean it's usually it's usually good to have the support, but I'm not I don't think we necessarily unless we want to establish a precedent of having formal approval from the entities that we are studying. Um, I don't I don't know whether we really need actual permission I, from the city commission to do it or whether we want to do it as a as essentially an outreach and in, in the interest of complete transparency. I I, it's, I, I don't have to do outreach, but I think it's also dangerous to begin setting a precedent that we need permission to do something that legally we're obligated to do. Yeah. Yeah. We we studied Nazareth and the Bronson Park and and the uh, um, the, the little house at Drake and West Main. We studied all those things without getting the uh, well, permission of the was, order. It was the intent of PA 169 to clearly not ask for permission from anyone right. because it politicizes the process. Right. And that the commissions under PA 169 should go forth and do their work. I think if you were to consult with Amy Arnold or Alan Higgins on this, they would say, no. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I, th I think I think seeking permission sets a really dangerous precedent. That, I agree. That it becomes, it's, it's essentially seeking permission for something you don't need permission to do. Right. So, I mean, one thing that we can do just with the um, I mean, it'd be nice to do a, a, a presentation to the committee of the whole if they were interested in that. Mm -hmm. But there is the city manager's report that also has departmental reports in it that is read at every city commission meeting. And um, I can put stuff in that all the time and say that the Preservation Commission has begun a historic study of City Hall and uh, would be proud to present it to the to the. Uh, city commission when the when the project is complete just a matter of keeping them in the loop and informed rather than necessarily um asking for permission mm -hmm. well, so would that be in instead of sending a letter asking to talk with them about the process mm -hmm. yeah i mean we could we could still make it an uh excuse me we could still make an offer to come and talk to them about historic districts and what we um, might be hoping to accomplish in Bronson Park. But keep in mind that that is cable cast. So that is, uh, it is a public meeting like any public meeting, the committee of the whole. So, I mean, we don't want to keep it a secret. I absolutely don't want to do that. But mm -hmm. I think we should have um, information about this going out in 
a stream to the city commission. Well, that's that was the intent of the letter, I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and in that light, I mean, maybe we want to do, maybe we want to do the letter um, within the first sentence, possibly change would like to prepare. Um, because again, that kind of hints at that we're asking permission to to do, you know, the 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 HPC is the study commission, mm -hmm. and you know, it 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 reads like we're asking permission to do what the study commission is designed right. to do. Right, and and um, the short and reports, was, the short reports that go to the city manager for him to read, um, you know, reporting on the different departments. Really, I would have bought two paragraphs to be able to put something in and say that the Preservation Commission is continuing to study other buildings around Bronson Park. And the one that they have currently decided to work on next is City Hall. And we might even consider adding a couple more to the list, you know, like we would do, after that, we'd like to do the county courthouse, then we'd like to do the Prang building, and maybe just an idea that this is an entire sequence, not necessarily just one building. Because I mean, really with what all that research you did, Pam, for the Bronson Park, um, local historic district thing. I mean, it's just really a matter of reformatting an awful lot of the information we already have. Right. So, right. so, so yeah, I, 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 I'm iffy about whether we need permission and I'd like to get a response back from uh, Clyde about that. My guess is that he'll say we don't need permission to do a study. That's our job. That's what the city commission has, um, you know, empowered us to do. Sharon, is your concern about the, the permission end of things, just the fallout of prior yeah, experiences I just... versus just, I mean, I, I think that we are able to do it, but right. Right. I don't, I, I don't think that we need any approval, mm -hmm. but uh, if it's a concern, if I, I can understand it, if it's a concern of, of kind of our baggage uh -huh. that we carry into working on this, if you will. But if we, if we are not, if we are solid in PA 169 and knowing that we can be a study committee, then yeah, we should change would like to either is working on or is preparing or well, whatever whatever if, we would want that wording to be. Um, if I get something together for the city manager's report, which used to be, has, usually has to be in by noon on Friday before the meeting. I don't think they're meeting next week. Anyway, um, I, I will just send it to you guys to comment on. And I, I think if we got it in the city manager's report at the beginning of May, which is preservation month, we could even tag it to that, you know, in celebration of Preservation Month, the Preservation Commission is continuing to study buildings around Bronson Park and that these are the other things we're doing. That does not appear on our work plan that we would study and it says we would support more local designation, but it doesn't in any way specify. Um, yeah. You might well, want to make sure you kind of rewrite some of the uh, paragraphs, such as that whole paragraph oh, for this reason. It's going to be it's going to be two paragraphs total. Oh. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a major rewrite. So, um, but I think that gives us the opportunity to inform the commission and the um, the general public who follow the commission meetings, and also uh, it will make the offer to you know, if they want to know more about historic districts and how they're working in Kalamazoo and how local historic designation is working. The fact that we have, uh, we've already done First Baptist Church and we have two other possible pending requests to become local historic districts for property owners. Um, this kind of fits into an entire larger process so that it does not appear that we're only looking at Bronson Park. We, we are looking throughout the city for other buildings and other uh, organizations that would like to be designated in some way as a local district. But the whole point of writing this letter was to discuss at, to some extent what the losses 
around the park have meant and that it's time for the city to step up and support preservation in Kalamazoo in this way. And so that's not gonna be part of your comment. That's true. Yeah. And well, I, I think you I think I think you should you can go with the letter. I, uh, I think that second to last paragraph is your ask. And that should be moved to the front, to the top. Because your ask the ask is, can you guys sit down and talk to us so we can get this going? That's the ask. And that should be first. You're right. <laughs> I agree you should put a letter together so that, you know, you have something documented and, you know. We all agreed on that months ago. Yeah. yeah. But the ask is that. So you want you want to sit down and talk to them. So is it, I mean, it's kind of sounding like we want some switcheroos in the current letter. Are we undecided on whether or not we would like Sharon to, whether or not we would like to submit the letter or whether we would like to go a double route of having it in the city manager's notes and submitting a letter or what are we thinking? Well, the letter I think was, was part of Jack Urban. Mm -hmm. suggestion yep. Yep. yeah and and we agree that's why we agreed to do it at the time um so I, letter number official. one oh, oh sorry Lene. no i was just gonna say i think to be official <clears throat> you should do the letter but then also get on you know on the what, manager's report yeah, yeah. yeah I'm because because just like on our agenda, um, we hardly ever use it, but our agenda always at the beginning, it has correspondence and correspondence. Yeah. And, and that's mm -hmm. where it could go to the city commission and be part of the packet for exactly that same reason. That same way. I'm willing to make edits to the letter um, as needed. But I'm also thinking that, you know, this, this whole process now has been set back a couple of months and it's going to pretty soon, it's going to go poof up into the air if something doesn't happen with it. Or do we, do we want to write the letter and maybe just do the study committee report and then it present it to the commission. I think that would be an unwise way to proceed given their yeah, reaction. I don't, know that, I don't know that we want to do that. I mean, even though, even though that is the process, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, it really, it, is. it really is. Yes. I don't know that we just after the last, no, I do know after the last round, we really don't want to do that. Okay. Because again, it, it 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 lacks it lacks the transparency, and and you know maybe it maybe it's just one of the inherent flaws of the process, right? But but it lacks the tra transparency that was really the sticking point the last time around. Um, so I think right from the start, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with walking and hand holding whoever is involved through the entire process, right? Um, what I really don't want to do is ask permission to do it. I guess that's my big sticking point because I think that sets such a dangerous precedent. So what about a re what about if we revisit if if and I'm happy to, to make another draft, if we revisit the letter um, and say, we want to make sure that you're aware of the fact that we plan to initiate a historic local historic district study report for city hall it deserves the designation and it's time for us to have a conversation about the process mm -hmm. it can also be a yeah. shorter letter yeah, yeah. I, that way yeah i i i think that's i think that's good 
And you know, we always want to mention partnerships, loving and stroking and all of that in the left. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> partnerships. Celebrating Preservation Month. Right. In the great city of Kalamazoo. Yeah. And Pam, it's, it's a totally small thing, but while we're on the topic, um, for my name, Joshua D. Koenig, please. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. What does E stand for? D. D as in David. And what? Oh, it stands, it stands for, David. for David. Okay. For David. <laughs> that was easy. I only remember that when we had two first name Davids and one right. middle name David all on the commission at the same time. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Davids. We had three. We had Benet. Oh, we had David Corman. Yeah, we had three Corman. first name Davids and a fourth middle name David. We decided that we weren't going to have any more Davids for another decade. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, shall we shall we ditch the the relationship to the Brownson Park the whole Brownson Park issue? What do you mean? Shall we take it out? Not mentioning the contributing part of the Brownson Park National. Oh well, no, but or, the, but the the sad history of the loss. Yes, I Focus would. on the positive. Yeah. Focus on how wonderful the building is. Like Lene said. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like Lene says, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's that's actually not a bad idea. I'm going to try to come up with a, a one page or less that but, does all of those things. Yeah. Okay. Any other any other comments or discussion on this? Thank you, Pam. Yeah, thank sure. you, Pam. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to operations, short and sweet. My meeting with Christina Anderson, the city planner, is going to be May 4th, May 4th, May 5th, uh, beginning of next month. Um, so I'll have a bigger report next month. Um, we are still, we've got one vacancy on the commission. And as the last time I talked to Sharon, we have no new applications. We have, we have one application that oh, was there last year, and I am going to be getting a hold of him and seeing if he's still interested. And then I also have the folks in our communications department putting out a call to, um, you know, just that there's an opening. And if anybody's interested, this is what you need to do. Okay. So, so I'd really like to have word. more than one candidate if we can. So Yeah, spread the word. If you know anybody who's interested, have them submit an application. Um, yeah. Okay, old and new business. Moving to the finalizing the project for Kalamazoo Lost and Found, and this is item F um, in your in your packets. So there are three three actions required in the report. Yes. Um, and one of the ones that I would like to focus on a little bit for your information is a more complete description of what we would be asking Peter Brakeman to do for us mm -hmm. for the not to exceed $1,800. May I go ahead and do that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. He was kind enough to break it down in much more detail than I could have provided. And it actually kind of took my breath away. Um, so um, he's got a note in here that when we created the um, first edition, and then updated it, we created new files, which, which were only the only pages that we changed were the pages that needed corrections or additions or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we did not build a new file at that time. We just stuck stuff, pulled stuff out and stuck some pages in. Um, note two, we built original digital files for the book using the standards of the time. 20 years later, standard practices have evolved. That's an understatement. They've mm -hmm. been like turned inside out and right side out again. And mm -hmm. so some of the work that he's gonna be doing involves bringing the native 2001 files up to date and then to current standards. So he's going to open the Quark Express files. I love the name of that software program. 
And that's a four-step process. And he's going to do that with both sets of files, both 2001 and 2004. He's going to adjust the font, the text wrapping, the line breaks, the letter spacing, spacing issues on every single page because they, there are the, the conversion software will not do that. Um, and then um, he's going to replace all of what were the, what he refers to as low res placeholder images because we actually took photographs to the printer. We didn't print them. He, they weren't set up as part of the book. So all of those images have to be put in the book on all of the pages. That's about 500 images. And it's not an automatic process. He can't just click a button and have them self-populate. They have to be done individually. Um, and then the, oh, he says here, as an extra challenge, the high-res images were created with two different naming systems. Um, then he has to consolidate the 17 original files, which I think are broken down by chapter or section of the book, um, into a single InDesign file. And then there will be miscellaneous stuff that needs to be res resolved. A few of the low-res files appear not to have a corresponding high-res image. Um, but he thinks that with you know, knowing where they came from will allow us to find those original images and, and get them. So it's, it's gonna be um, a challenge. And then once all of that is done, we end up with one PDF file to meet the requirements that we need. So frankly, I would say $1,800 is a bargain. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that I wanted to elaborate on. I don't know if you have questions about any of the others, except I do have a clarification. Sharon said in the agenda that we would be reassigning our copyright to KPL. That is not the case. All we would be, we would be retaining our copyright and giving KPL permission to publish. Okay, mm -hmm. that was gonna be my question I, because I was gonna ask, are you really turning over your intellectual property? No. Because no. I didn't think you would be. No. So, okay. No. And um, so that's a clarification there. Um, so that's, that's action number one, whether or not we'd like to give KPL permission to publish all three of the documents and they would disassemble um, the first two books and scan it themselves. Mm -hmm. The third one, Lost and Found, would be taken care of by Peter who would deliver a file to them to publish. APL. Yeah. Okay. So that's action number one. Action number two is that we hire Peter to do that prep work so that he can in fact deliver the file. And then um, number three would be for the approval of phase one, which is all of that except for the giveaway plan, basically. Mm -hmm. And we have some ideas for that. Sharon added a few, um, you know, giving it to not just the city of Kalamazoo employees, but graduates. Um, but again, we wanna be very careful about our giveaways so that we don't put our um, retailers inventories, whatever they may have purchased by then in jeopardy of not being able to sold because we're giving away so many to, to, to people who might walk into a bookstore and buy it. Right. Questions? Is this clear to everybody? What are the three books? The first one is Walking Through Time. It's a little paperback about this big. It's an older one. Right. Yeah. We, it was published in the 80s, and we refer to it as the little book with the exploding binding. Yeah. I was going to say, that would be awesome to get digitized because that thing just falls apart. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> all, you need, all you need is a rubber band around it. I actually had mine comb bound. That's it. Sharon had hers comb bound, too. <laughs> I said Larry had that done. The rubber oh, okay. band will stick to the paper after too long. Yeah. And this is the right. other one. The second one, um, Fred, is Kalamazoo 19th Century Homes in a Midwestern Village. You probably have a copy of that. And That's by Schmidt, right? 
Yeah, I brought. I do not yeah. have a copy of that one. And then number three is Lost and Found. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be just spectacular to have those available for people. I really, I yeah. really do. I do too. I actually have used my copy of Lost and Found so many times, a paperback copy, that its binding has exploded. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to I, if there are no questions or anything right now and everything's clear I'm going to we we actually have to we're going to vote on these each individually so we're going to need three different nominations because the one smack dab in the middle is actually dealing with money also so we have to do a roll call vote um so the first one is uh, dealing with the permission to publish um, the, Cal the KPL, the Kalamazoo Public Library, transferring or granting them permission to publish. So, and specifically publish Kalamazoo Lost and Found, Walking Through Time, and Kalamazoo 19th Century Homes. So you can, gonna... you can take your language right out of that paragraph because it also includes the agreement with KPL to do that. Where are you? We would, we would, uh, page give one, the next permission last to publish, paragraph. right? I and agree. ask Keith Howard to, to ask the library to prepare the agreement. It's near the bottom of page one on, on that form, second to the bottom, action required, copyright. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so the. Yeah, so the motion would be to recommend that the KPL, to grant the KPL permission to publish all three still copywritten works and ask Keith Howard at the KPL to have a draft agreement. Do we need to clarify if we want one or three separate? I think Keith said it could happen either way okay. and he would leave that to whomever prepares it at the KPL. Okay. Yeah. I was just clarifying. I don't think that clarified it, but it should be clear and no, it, in the it future. Clarified what we need the motion to be, yeah. <laughs> whether or not we need to to be that specific or not. So, so I am calling for a motion. Somebody has to make the motion. What I have here, taken from Pam's paragraph, is the KHPC would give the Kalamazoo Public Library permission to publish all three still copyrighted works and ask Keith Howard at KPL to have a draft agreement or three separate agreements prepared that the KHPC could have reviewed for signature by the city attorney. These works include Walking Through Time, Kalamazoo 19th Century Homes in a Midwestern Village, and Kalamazoo Lost and Found. So all something that makes the motion needs to do is say, so moved. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, the next motion, um, I'm going to call for a motion to hire Peter Brakeman at Brakeman Design to digitize at a cost not exceeding $1,800. I motion to pay the man. <laughs> Is there a second? I will second. Okay. Fred? Yes. Kyle? Yes. Regina? Yes. Lene? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Okay. And now phases one and two, yeah? Yeah. And then toward the end on, on page three of the document, yeah, that's where that is stated. Yeah, that's just that's just phase two though, yeah? Don't we need to... It says approval of phases one and two of the resolving the remaining physical inventory is required. If ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, so what Pam just said. <laughs> it's there. Sharon can copy and paste it. Yeah. That includes the letter. And let me... Let me... Um, tell you why I set it up to come from me rather than from you all. And that is because I have the relationship with the retailers. Right. 
And that makes sense. It's as yeah, simple that as that. That made perfect sense to me. You okay with the timeline? I'm I'm okay with that. My I I do actually have well, I mean this can be in discussion after somebody makes the motion. Because I do, I do actually have a couple questions. Okay. And you want to wait until after the motion? Yes, I, I, we, okay. we, we actually should do that. Sharon, do you want, do you have the official language in front of you? Do you want to read it? Um, because I just lost it again, sorry. Is it the portion at the end of page three? Yes. Action required. Okay. Yeah. So then okay. Approve, so, approve, yeah. so approval of phases one and two of the resolving remaining physical inventory is required. If changes are made, I ask, right, so so right around there. I just I understand that that I mean Pam, is there something besides your, you know, being tired of dealing with this? Um, is there something else driving this? Has the record center said we want this stuff out of here or anything? Well, we talked about this a couple of months ago, Sharon. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the local market is saturated. Yeah. Sales have dropped to a point where it's not going to be affordable for the Preservation Commission to pay someone right. to fulfill the orders. So they will then be in a negative situation rather than a positive situation. Right. There, I told, there yeah. have been comments from the records office on occasion about the amount of space that we're taking up. And there have been discussions, although not very recently, about what it costs to store them there. Yeah. Um, they are also, because they're getting, they are now shoved back into the deepest corner of the facility. They are increasingly hard to access. And so for all of those reasons, we decided to proceed this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, because I, I just, I, what I would, I don't, I, I'm, and I'm sorry, I just don't see a motion there other than to give away and to sell stuff at $5 a piece to people. Well, it, involves, it involves money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't see anything I can copy and paste there. Someone's going to have to make a oh, motion. The, 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 motion oh, would be to, the motion would be to approve phases one and two. And then Sharon, what, what oh, you would copy is, is, yeah, oh, because gotcha. it's, it's multiple steps within gotcha. each phase. Gotcha. Okay. That's, I, that's why it's a little tricksy. Oh, okay. I got that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pam. Okay. And I would like to request um, how many are in each box? Ballpark. 18 soft covers in a case mm -hmm. and nine hard covers in a case. Okay. Because I would like to have stacked in the corner of the coordinator's office right next to the, right next to the bookcase. I think there's room for us to have at least four boxes worth there for the coordinator to do with as they will whether to use for awards, whether to give to new preservation and district commissioners, to give to new city commissioners, the, the, that stock could be kept there for the coordinator to disperse. I, I, I think that's a good idea, but I do think so. there should be some limits because once again, if you're going to give a case of books to a group that might be willing to go in and pay for the books, it's the same. It's it's the same caution that I gave about all of the other potential giveaways. We need to keep in mind that we hopefully are going to have retailers out there with books to sell, and they've been good partners for us for twenty years. I, I, I totally, I know, I totally agree with that. That's not. Yeah. I'm thinking that four years from now, we get some new two new historic district commissioners, and whoever has the job says, "Here, this is a gift for being a historic district commissioner." Right, but when you so, said as they will, I didn't know what. Well, no, I, I didn't mean no, not giving away like that. I was thinking a piece at a time. Yeah, well, and could, we could also those, have over hundred copies of, of Walking Through Time still. I, those could qualify under the reserve two hundred copies as gifts for future yeah. preservation yeah. awards. Those yeah, could be held in the office. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just so that so yeah. that 
be there because that's something very substantial and it's a wonderful book. And I think that, you know, that that would be, sometimes it, it can really make a difference to be able to give a gift to someone, maybe a visitor from out of town. I was just meeting with the guy who runs Colleagues International and Kalamazoo is the smallest city that they ever tour. It usually is like Denver and San Francisco and, you know, Pensacola, something like that. And he says that, you know, it, it, people like that, it might be nice to be able to give them something to remember Kalamazoo by when they are here, that kind of thing. So could be a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, Terry used to be a member of that organization and they're very active. They're very active. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I would have no problem with that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I think what we're looking for in emotion here needs to incorporate yes to phase one. We're going to put the books out for sale to our retailers at $5 a piece. And it's going to operate as stated in the letter. And that we have, and then you could say something as simple as the rest of the development process in terms of giveaways can be established as we move further into the year, because we all have ideas. Sharon's had some more ideas. I've had some more ideas. Um, something as simple as that. Okay, so let's see if She's I can make a stab at it. See if I can do it. Uh, so <laughs> I motion that we approve phase one of the resolution of remaining physical inventory for Kalamazoo lost and found, including uh, future, uh, including future details on uh, dispersion of said books to be determined. Right, except I want, I want to be sure that you include the $5 a piece to the retailers because that's the money thing that you have right. to vote on and the schedule. I would like, as I said, to get this in the mail pretty soon because we'd like to bring it to a close by the 1st of June. That then gives us several more months to make decisions about the rest of the books. Okay. Okay, to, okay, resolving, <clears throat> approval of the phase, phase one of resolving the remaining physical inventory of Cal, Kalamazoo lost and found, including offering the books at $5 each. To, to our established, retailers, to our retailers. To, to current retailers. And that's both hard and soft copies? Yes. Uh, okay. And but I don't think you need to specify yeah, that. It doesn't matter. No, no, I just say to $5, offering the books at $5 to current retailers and seeking According other to the schedule. opportunities. Pardon? And on According to the schedule laid out in the, in the draft letter to retailers. Oh, thank you for saying that. I was like, where did I see June? But it's in your letter. Yeah. Okay. And then in the draft letter, go away. To and to um, pursue other outlets to disperse remaining copies. That's good, yes, that sounds good, yes. So that way we're not defining it, but it makes it clear that that is our intent. Right. So if Sharon reads it, does that mean someone can say so moved again? I, yes, I will do it. So what I've got is um, approval of phase one of resolving the remaining physical inventory of Kalamazoo Austin Fowd, including offering the books at $5 each to current retailers, according to the schedule in the draft letter to retailers, and pursue other outlets to disperse the remaining copies throughout the, till the end of the year. Does that sound right? Yes. By the end of 2020, 2021. Yes. Well, there were some deadlines set at an earlier city commission meeting, we have to do something by September 1st and something else by, we have to finish by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what I say. So that rather than go into all that detail, 
We just say disperse the remaining copies by the end of 2021. Okay. Okay. So, so moved. moved. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You can go, Fred. So, give it to Fred. so moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Fred. Yes. Kyle. Yes. Regina. Yes. Lene. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, there we go. Thank you. You had some questions, Josh? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, we're fine. Um, any, anything else with this? Thanks everybody for waiting through it. I appreciate that. Okay. We moving had to, all the points. Moving to uh, approval of meeting notes from last month. Item G in your packet. I don't recall seeing anything when I read through them and I just looked at them again, unless I'm missing something. Anything? All right. Kyle usually gives me typos and stuff, so. Yeah, motion to approve. <laughs> I'll motion to approve the minutes. Second. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, coordinators report. Okay, let me see, what did I write? Yeah. There, okay. That, 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 that. There we go. Okay, um, I have been approached by both um, Allen Chapel AME and the Factory Coffee Building, which is in the block that is one block south of the Gibson Building on uh, East Frank Street. And he is very interested in possibly becoming a local historic district um, mm -hmm. as a one remaining example of a small uh, manufactory that is still there and in place. Um, I asked what I have asked them and Allen Chapel AME both to submit is a letter to the commission requesting that their buildings be studied. Kind of like we did with, with um, First Baptist. And they both said that was a great idea. I heard from the pastor today and I said, you know, it's really kind of too late today because we have to have it on the agenda so that we remain public and transparent. So um, anyway, so they're both very interested and this may be something that we may get more of as time goes on, you know, that people want to be, especially with the, um, uh, the tax credit coming online, we may get more people that say, yeah, yeah, I want to be in the local historic district so I could take advantage of this. And uh, I think that'd be wonderful. So um, the other thing is, and I did not put this in here because I, I sent out a, uh, an email to NAPC and uh, a couple of other places asking National, National Alliance of Pre Preservation Commissions, asking if there were any other cities or states that had statewide archeology span plans or citywide archeology span plans like we are talking about. And there are some large cities that have it and I've got several examples. And so I am planning on writing a report probably for this commission, but also for, uh, for Christina and Rebecca and for the higher ups to uh, just kind of, you know, summarize what the reports are for, what they cover and how they are used as examples from other cities. So um, I, I don't know whether I'm getting a little bit of a sense of, we just don't want anything to slow things down but at the same time, nobody's saying we won't even consider it. So I think they just need a lot more information. And I was very pleasantly surprised the amount of support I got and the details that uh, people were willing to provide. So I think that is very possibly a, a positive thing. Pam. Two, one, two, three things. Um, the most recent that you were just talking about this, the archeology span plans, I would be happy to post a question on the forum website on that same topic, if it will help bring you more information. I've Keep got going. answer eight already. I've got one, the entire state of Washington. Hmm. I've got San Antonio. Um, and I've got 
three or four other ones that are smaller. We would be a relatively small um, town on the end of that scale. But let me see what I have first, Pam. And if um, if I do, I can just let you know. Okay. But I'd like to probably help as well. Yeah, I'm sure. And I just want, I mean, I want to support it, give them some context for considering it. Yeah. So um, with regard to Allen Chapel and the factory coffee building, um, when you say they are interested, does that mean you've had the preliminary conversations with all of the owners about what it means and how it would affect what happens to the building and all of that? Yes. Okay. All right. If I remember correctly from somewhere way back in here, the factory coffee building, because I recognized it when I, I looked for a picture of it on, on Google Maps today, it was a pattern company? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't remember what kind of patterns they were making it, not oh. dress patterns. No, it no, was no, no, no. Patterns. Tool, and, tool and die. Tool and die, they made the wood patterns for castings. Okay. okay. The owner, is his name Dan? I'm forgetting Dan now. Yep. Yes. He, he's reached out to me a few times looking for information on the building and, and the, the man who owned it and ran the foundry. And they actually, not to plug them, but I do like their coffee, uh, but they uh, were selling little casts of their building that were recast locally uh, to represent that, that history and the connection to tool and die, which I thought that was, was actually going to be my next question. What do we know about it? Who has what? Since I, have a, I have a little bit, but I don't remember it right now because it was quite a while ago that yeah. he, but I can pull stuff together. And he's, and he's, no, he's actually done a, a great deal of research himself. He has, right. yeah. If you look on his Instagram posts, he actually posts stuff about the history of the building and the, the business that was there quite a bit. He also okay. talks about, he talks about the adjacent buildings that used to be there as well. And the fact that the side building for him used to be a Polish dance hall. Interesting. You know, and, it's a little and is story. that an actual physical addition or is it freestanding? It's connected. It's connected. It's connected. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm only so, asking because I'm thinking ahead in terms of right. projects and stuff. And also, I don't know whether it would work. Uh, and, and for Allen Chapel AME, it might work as an addition to Stewart because it is right across the street. And they own the lot that is across there's, it's on Staples and they own the lot that's across Staples and then you're right up next to the historic district again. Yeah. So it, it would extend the district a little bit and for um, uh, for the coffee, for the factory coffee place, there are three very intact um, like late 19th century vernacular houses right across the street. And if they were interested in joining in, we might end up with a little mini district right there too. So I've been exploring a lot of different ideas with him and have, um, you know, we haven't gone anywhere, but they, both of them said they were very interested and that they would definitely be willing to go through and, and, and uh, cooperate with and help a process that, that could bring them that designation. Okay, one more thing. Remember to disconnect the requirement for being in a local district in the Michigan tax credit that no longer exists. I know. Okay. Yeah. But I, I mean, this I, I don't. I'm looking at it politically as a way to maybe get a small district on the north side so people can kind of get their toe in the water and say, oh, this really wasn't so bad. And it had some real benefits to these property owners. Right. And as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're really, if, if we're looking at property that we really want to protect, there's no reason to, national, to designate them to the National Register. Right. Local design, if we can make a case for local designation, we should always do that. Both of these are requests for local designation. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think that's great. Keep so, me posted? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every, I'm going to keep everybody posted. So I think I think that's everything I've got, unless any of you have copies or, excuse me, questions for anything that's uh, going on. Nope. Okay. Uh, citizen comments on non-agenda items. Are there any citizen comments? There are no comments at this time. All right, thank you. Any commission comments? I'm going to call for somebody to move to adjourn the meeting. Yes, please. You got to, you got to, you got to move. You got to move to adjourn the meeting, Kyle. Move to adjourn. <laughs>
Meeting adjourned. Even though that was polite. Nope. <laughs> nope. We all are right. there. We are there. Thank you all. Good all night. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Karen and Lene, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Three. Yeah. I'm going to be a little before three. Okay. okay. I'm going to be at Lynn's a little before three to look at her windows because she doesn't know how to operate them. Mm. I'm Bye. not alone. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.